Hello, Knitted Squares family. I'm back after a month of international travel, and I am excited to connect with you again right here on this channel of intentional, interwoven lovers of Jesus who are influencing our world for Him. If you were looking for fresh episodes and you couldn't find me, I really apologize. Between the interconnection, internet connection being unreliable at the camp in the Missouri Hills where I was taking a course, followed by two weeks of precious time with our kids and family, I didn't have a chance to knit and upload a square for you. But as the old campfire song says, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And that's what I want to share with you today. Another spark to fan your love and passion for Jesus. Bible camp halfway between Springfield and St. Louis was the setting for a two-week language course that I had the privilege of taking in the month of February. Now Bob stayed home in Botswana because, and I quote in his words, he would rather have a root canal than take a language course. <laughs> well opposites do attract because I loved every moment of it and I learned so much that's going to help us learn our host culture's language, which is Setswana, and help missionaries that we train to do the same. But don't worry, this is not an episode on learning language, so stay with me. Since February in Missouri is still well within old man winter's territory, we had plenty of freezing rain, snow, and wind to chill this now desert girl to the bone. Being in the camp setting, a bonfire with s'mores seemed like a great idea. And so I mentioned it to Greg, the course director, and he thought it was a great idea too. So on a Wednesday night, the camp staff built a great fire for us and they brought the roasting sticks as well. I asked the camp manager, Robert, if he'd bring his guitar so we could sing campfire songs and worship together around the fire. He was super excited to do that. And yes, one of the first songs I asked for was Pass It On, the quintessential campfire song. It only takes a spark to get a fire going And soon all those around will warm up in its glowing Yep, so there we were, about 20 of us around the fire on benches enjoying s'mores and singing lots of good old songs. But after a time, the cold was setting in, and I could tell I wasn't going to be long for this fun, and neither was anyone else, if we were chilled to the bone. The fire was going strong in the middle of this circle, but the problem was the benches were too far away for us to feel it. I thought, this is silly. There's plenty of warmth right there if we could just come closer. I stood up and walked forward to the fire and immediately began to thaw my hands. This was a good idea. It was 15 seconds and three others had joined me. So it was definitely an improvement. But standing around a fire singing songs wasn't gonna last either. If only the benches could be moved. Now I wasn't sure if they could because in the dark it looked like they might be made from cement and actually fixed in place. But I had to try. I walked over to a vacated bench the previous occupants had already gotten too cold and gone back to their cabins. I, I went over to that bench to see if it would budge, and voila, it was easily moved. I pulled it up nice and close to the fire and I sat down. And another 15 seconds and my bench was full. Another minute and two other benches were moved to the fire's edge. And after five minutes, everyone had pulled their benches close. We were cozy together around the fire and Robert kept playing his guitar and we kept singing for another hour. It was wonderful fun and fellowship. Well, the next morning as I was in my prayer time, the Holy Spirit showed me that the campfire was a picture of how we must posture ourselves in these last days. You know very well how much turmoil we are in globally. The world is getting darker and colder with each passing day. And not to be Johnny Raincloud, but it's likely this downward trend will continue because Jesus warned us how badly things would deteriorate before his return. He didn't say these things to scare us, but to prepare us. 
See, there is absolutely nothing we will face individually or as the body of Christ that he will not see us through. He told us that even in the midst of many trials and sorrows, that we are to be of good cheer because he's overcome the world. There is plenty of warmth in Christ to keep us through cold, dark nights, but we won't find it from a distance. Each one of us must, must come closer to the fire, closer to Jesus. In these last days, it is our love for Christ that will keep us through hell and high water. Last year, you may remember, I did a couple episodes, which you can link to right here, about loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. I shared past you Pastor Andrew Brunson's testimony from his two years in a Turkish prison where he almost lost his faith because he had allowed his love for Christ to grow cold. He was working hard for God in Turkey as a missionary pastor for 25 years, but he had drifted from a place of intimacy with Christ. After a year in prison, God showed him the true condition of his heart. He repented, and throughout the second year of imprisonment, Intimacy with Christ was restored as never before, and he boldly shared the gospel with his captors and the Turkish authorities, not knowing if he would live or die. Well, he was released, and having been released, he now travels and speaks to encourage us, God's people, to draw closer and closer to Christ, to be passionately in love with Jesus, because that is the only thing that will keep us strong as persecution and end-time events unfold. That night, a month ago, around that campfire, I was able to influence those around me to come closer and warm themselves with me. All it took was me getting up and leading the way. Before I did it, I wondered if anyone would follow me or if I would look foolish being up there by myself. But I took the risk and I'm so glad I did. Turns out, everyone else was as cold as I was and wishing for warmth, but someone had to lead. This is a picture of where we are right now. Many around us are too far away from the fire. Maybe you are too far from the fire. Maybe you used to be really close to God, but for one reason or another, and there are many, you've drifted away. Maybe you still appear close on the outside, but in your heart, you know you aren't where you want to be or you need to be. Maybe you've gotten into the habit of attending church online because it's just easier. Well, of course it's easier, but I assure you it is not better. We need each other. We need to pursue God together. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, we are explicitly instructed, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Friends, in Christ, we have all we need for life and godliness in these perilous times. There is plenty of heat to keep us all burning hot for Christ until he calls us home. But we won't find the heat out on the fringes. We must draw near. We must come close. One of the best ways to come close to the fire is by passing it on to others. Share Christ and encourage others in your local church Teach a class, lead a Bible study. You know what? I've never attended a church where all the teaching and serving slots were filled. There is always a need. When you step in to serve, you are moving your bench closer to the fire. And you know, a teacher always learns more than his or her students, even if you're teaching preschoolers. In addition, to stay growing and passionate in your spiritual walk, spend time in worship. Find a playlist on YouTube and sing along, worship along to express your love for God. There are so many to choose from. There's every style of music and from every decade, it's readily available. If you don't know how to search for them, ask any young person or message me, I will hook you up. Also, don't let dust collect on your Bible. Open it and read. If you don't know where to read systematically, Google Bible reading plans and you'll get hundreds of hits. Or download the YouVersion app, and inside that app, there are plans galore on every topic, or read through the whole Bible plans. In addition to attending your local healthy church and to worship and reading the Bible, I also encourage you, listen to good teaching and preaching on Christian radio, TV, or again, YouTube or ministry websites. There is no shortage of them. 
And another way I have found to stoke my fire is to read inspiring books. Right now I'm reading Bonhoeffer by Eric Metaxas. It's a biography of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian and pastor, who did his best to warn the German church of the goals of Hitler and his Third Reich. This is a book for our times, and I can't recommend it highly enough. We need many Bonhoeffers to stand up and speak out in our day. By God's grace and power, I am one. How about you? The old campfire song is right. It only takes a spark to get the fire going. Soon all those around will warm up and it's glowing. Be the spark. Be intentional to be interwoven with those around you and influence others to join you in your hot pursuit of all God has for us in these closing days of time. You may stand alone. And Jesus will be right there with you. But you may find others thrilled to follow your lead to the light and love of Christ. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you want to sing. It's fresh like spring, which is now here. You want to pass it on. Father, I pray right now for all of us Knitted Squares that we will each take a step closer to you this week and the next and the next. Help us to prioritize our spiritual lives because left alone, we will surely drift. We must be intentional to lean in closer and resist the pull of the flesh to coast or assimilate into the culture around us because it's easier. You haven't called us to easy. You have called us to discipleship, to follow in your steps. Help us to stay right on your heels and in doing so, lead others to do the same. We love you and we need you day by day glorified in us and through us in the mighty name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining me again today. It only takes a spark. Be the spark. I'll see you next week.